Global temperatures are continuing to rise, thanks to climate change and hot girl summer. But <laughs> the good news is Elon Musk has a backup plan. Elon Musk says his vision of sending humans to the moon and Mars could soon become a reality. The SpaceX CEO showed off the latest version of his towering stainless steel Starship rocket on Saturday in Texas. He called the vehicle the critical breakthrough that will make space travel like air travel. There are many troubles in the world, of course, and we, th these are important and we need to solve them. But we also need things that make us ex excited to be alive, that make us glad to wake up in the morning um, and be fired up about the future. And this, this is, I think, the, the most inspiring thing that I've ever seen. Okay, uh, <laughs> I love Elon Musk, but what, what the hell is this thing? <laughs> no, maybe I'm spoiled because I'm used to his inventions looking cool and futuristic, but if I'm going to space, I'm not going in a giant dildo mirror. I don't know what that <laughs> thing is. And you know Elon even thinks that this thing looks weird because he held a press conference in the middle of the night. That's never a great sign. <laughs> Like, imagine if your friend was like, so I'm dating this guy, and he's really cool. It's like, oh, can we meet him? Yeah, but only in a cornfield at midnight. <laughs> and by the way, Elon, if you're trying to sell us on space travel, stop saying you're gonna make it the new air travel. Everyone hates air travel, okay? Because now you're just saying it's gonna be in space. So now instead of getting excited about space, I'm thinking of, like, my flights getting canceled while I'm stuck on Mars, <laughs> having to deal with aliens at the TSA, humans dispose of liquids, prepare for probing. <laughs> I'd be like, I'm just going to Cleveland. Everybody gets probed. <laughs> Seriously, if space travel was like flying, it would be terrible. Because it's also so much longer. It's like light years of flying. The last thing I want to be doing is sitting next to a crying baby for like 16 years. <laughs> Can you imagine the things just crying, ah, ah. And then by the time we land, it's a crying man. Wah, <laughs> wah, wah. You've been crying this whole time. This is all I know. Wah. <laughs> all right, but let's move on to our next story. Because if Elon Musk is looking for someone crazy enough to fly his rocket, I think I know just the right person. We turned out to a school bus driver allegedly drunk on the job in Washington State. The frightening video from inside that bus, and you can hear the children screaming in fear. No, no! Police say the driver, 48-year-old Catherine Macaron, was under the influence while behind the wheel earlier this month. I am crazy. I'm totally a boy rushing home to call 911, telling the operator his driver sped through three red lights. Macaron driving 90 students that afternoon, later arrested. Wow. <laughs> Seeing this bus driver removed brings up every parent's worst nightmare, having to take your own kids to school. <laughs> you know there was probably one dad out there who was like, she was drinking? I, like, they better fire away, but that may... I mean, how much was she drinking? I, uh... Because, <laughs> I mean, uh... And as terrible as this is, you've got to admit, these kids will probably never drink and drive after this experience. <laughs> no, because trauma is way more powerful than any 30-second PSA that you can give kids, all right? Because they'll be, like, drunk driving. Like, that lady, I don't want to drink and drive. Like, if Smokey Bear really wanted to get kids to prevent forest fires, he just lights a few third graders on fire. Yeah. <laughs> no, because think about it. If a bear had lit your friend on fire, that shit stays with you forever. <laughs> But yes, the bus driver is in trouble. And honestly, I think this is a double standard. Because think about it. This woman drives a bus drunk and she gets arrested, but Denzel fly to, uh, flies a plane drunk, he gets an Oscar nomination. I think it's a double standard. <laughs> All right, and finally, for all those people who say they live at the gym, you may want to find a new home because we're learning that exercise isn't all it's cracked up to be. A new study finds that too much exercise might be bad, especially for the brain. Researchers found that athletes who overtrained made more impulsive choices when it came to their finances, eating habits, and self-care. That's because they displayed more fatigue in the cognitive control part of the brain system. That is likely caused them to have trouble decision-making. I love how whenever these studies come out, people who don't work out are like, you see, that's why I don't work out. <laughs> It's like, no, you weren't working out before the study. <laughs> and what about the Twinkies? Is that from a study? Is that what that is? <laughs> this study makes sense to me, though, because essentially your brain only has so much energy for decision-making. Like, it explains why we make good decisions in the morning, terrible decisions at night, right? Like, we've all heard of a one-night stand. You've never heard of a one-morning stand, <laughs> yeah? Because we're thinking straight. No one's like, dude, I woke up from my nap and there was a stranger lying next to me. <laughs> Like, your decisions get worse as the day goes on. It's true for me. I know it's true for you as well. 
Like in the morning, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna work out today, and I'm gonna have oatmeal before work, and then at the end of the day, I'm on the couch, like, I'm gonna eat a second tub of ice cream so that the first tub doesn't feel lonely. Ah.